We got it straight out the mud, they could it walk in our shoes We both got dark past, they gotta watch how they move I get a little crazy, they should be careful about how they be talking to you We a power couple like Yante and Jay Z, soon as we walk in the room We got it straight out the mud Hey y'all, I'm Ryan. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna go over a workflow that I made showcasing the uh, newest addition to my node suite, which are these audio visualizers. By the end of this video, you should be able to make something similar to what you saw in the intro with the, uh, with the waveforms and the face. So this is the workflow and it looks like a lot but it's not that bad when we break it down into pieces. This is essentially like multiple workflows slammed together. So <clears throat> I'll go over it piece by piece and it, it's it's not so bad. So let's start at the beginning. So we load the audio, we get empty masks, we separate the audio and here I've set up uh, a bunch of variables just because I was experimenting. So it's, it, you know, this way it's easy to switch out stuff and try different things but we've separated the audio and then created features for each of those pieces. I have separate tutorials on audio source separation and this flex feature system, which uh, enables this audio reactivity, but it, it doesn't have to be audio. You could swap it out for uh, motion, depth, time, proximity, color, brightness, MIDI, all sorts of stuff here. Here we're using audio. So this is, we use the, we, we use all this stuff to control these uh, audio visualizers, which I've just introduced to the node suite. So they there's two types. There's a there's the line and the circle, and I'm going to be adding more, but it just outputs. It doesn't matter what the color is and stuff. It just outputs this black and white because we're going to feed it directly into a, like a, a diffusion model. So even though it's sort of lackluster the the direct <laughs> output here it what you really have is like the most powerful audio visualizer known to man because it feeds directly into um the comfy ui pipeline so i'm not going to go over all of these settings because that would be really tedious but for more information on each of them just click this this question mark in the top right so we're using the audio uh from the vocals as the input for for this audio visualizer and you know it's important to set the frame rate to the same as uh, what we have earlier in the pipeline same with the, the, you know the height and width and, and all that garbage but i'll focus here like the other like the other flex nodes in my node suite this has the feature param and it's a list of different uh, values that can be controlled by this optional feature input. I haven't used it in this example, but you know, we could put, uh, we could put whatever we want here. Like let's keep, we could make it so that whenever there's bass, it makes the freaking number of bars increase, you know? But what's really cool is that instead of using one of these audio features, we could use some other feature like motion. So, Let's say we've got two, this circular visualizer, which isn't playing for some reason, but um, we could use the motion from the circular visualizer to control the, the maximum frequency of these line visualizers or whatever. You know, there's a, literally over one trillion ways to customize um, these flex feature nodes. So an additional way, like another, let's another tally on that exponent is in addition to this regular feature param from the optional feature, we extract a feature directly from the audio inside of this node. So it's an additional um, value that, we, that can be controlled just directly from the audio that we pass in here. So uh, uh, again, that just further amplifies it. So I've got two of these and uh, I've reflected it uh, down and then got a second one here and re reflected it the other way and then superimposed them on top of one another. So, so we get them going in both directions. All right, so that's the audio visualizer. Now we move on to the, the funny part where uh, to get that face in the middle and 
I've got this input video of me absolutely vibing here and I just, it's not a high quality video, but that doesn't matter. I'm just using this terrible webcam that you're all watching me through right now. Uh, and I did my best to get my face in the center of the video, but sort of missed the mark. So uh, I'm using this transform, image transform uh, with no f no feature input, but that's optional, just to move it to center my face. Um, I'll use this media pipe face mesh to get this sort of open pose looking outline of my face. Uh, and further transform that. We just, I grew it using scale instead of transform. We're, we're scaling it, so it's slightly bigger. So we've got the, the face mesh and the mask of the face mesh, and we use that to superimpose it over the output from our audio visualizers. So that is the setup. That's like one whole workflow in and of itself. And that's what we're using as the input for the rest of the workflow. So I've loaded the model using some LoRa's, set up the, the, the text conditioning, and you'll see that the latent input is this output from the first half of the workflow. Got the animate diff set up, I'm not gonna get into that. So we're taking canny, we could have, there's a lot of options here. We could have done open pose instead of canny since we have that face mesh, but this is what I ended up going with. And uh, so I'm, I'm using the canny, and this is an interesting approach here, using the canny in the first sampler only, and I'll explain why. So we've set the denoise to 0.52, uh, that's relatively arbitrary, but about half of the about half of the input latent is going to come show through in our output. And it gives us like, so we don't lose, like if, if we, if we had that denoise at one, we would just get some sort of random output, but I wanted it to look similar to what, what we, what we gave it. So that's what we have here. And you can see the face looks like it looks too close to that. Um, to the open to the face mesh it, it looks kind of stupid so that's why i removed the canny conditioning from the second sampler so we can make it more uh creative looking because here's and I, you know i it was like a delicate balance to get it to get it to where i wanted it here is an example i, I can't remember what i did to get this but it gives you some insight into like my thought process I wanted, you know, I wanted you to be able to see the, the lip syncing. So this looks really cool. It depends on what you're going for, but you know, the, the slime sort of ruined the lip syncing. So that's, that's why I started, started in with the canny and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> so we feed the latent from our first sampler, upscale it, and feed it into our second sampler with a, a lower, even, with an even lower denoise. And it's just to sort of get rid of this robotic looking garbage from the first one. Uh, here's another new node. This is an artifact from some experimentation I was doing, but I, I'll, I'll, I should, do, I could do a whole separate video on that. Maybe I will. Uh, I'll just sharpen it a little bit and here's the output. And I did it in uh, segments to get that full thing you saw at the beginning. So I hope that wasn't too bad. Uh, there's like literally, literally over a trillion ways that you can customize these audio visualizers. I have a slew of other workflows that I'm going to be showing you guys uh, regarding these uh, audio visualizers and some interesting ways you can use them. So. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Check out the, the GitHub, the Civit profile. Uh, we're going to be cooking literally with gas all the time on this channel, constantly in the kitchen. So subscribe for more. I've been Ryan. Thanks. Bye-bye.